Hello and welcome to In the Court of the Winter. Nay, we've done it. We've got to the end of the Attitude Tour, even though all the shows are, aren't that different. With live, live in Munich, they've gone to Germany. September the 29th, 82. So the, the end of the, this run of 82 shows uh, with another film show. And this was shown on TV, or an edit, edit of it was shown on TV. This is the full show. Uh, the film remains unreleased but is very easily attainable and so should be put on a proper beat box. Not a beat box, I mean a beat box, you know. The, the endless argument for freely available stuff, I deserve free stuff. This feels uncomfortable, but it was on the telly, so what are you going to do, you know? But it's on, it's on YouTube. Just make sure, if it does come out, you make sure you buy it. Everyone must buy it, if they do decide to release it. But you know, you, you could have three shows on a beat box. Concerts, videos, you know, so that's cool. Uh, and maybe more, more of the shows earlier on that they, they, they recorded as well. That would be really exciting. Uh, but yeah, in terms of free stuff, I mean, individual tra tracks on YouTube is one thing. I, I, you know, I support that in, in the sense that it, people find bands doing it that way. But uploading a whole album and putting adverts on it, there's no justification. Whatever side of the fence you're on, it's just out of order. You know, pay for it, for God's sake. Yeah, but it does, it does depend, obviously. Are bootlegs okay? The problem is if the band is going to release the bootlegs. King Crimson released the bootlegs. So, so for, for, to do that with King Crimson is completely really questionable because they've released there's, there's, there's such an amount available. But to do that with, like, say, the Zeppelin, some of it is unreleasable. So that's a different thing, and it, you know it's never going to be released. So maybe that's a different argument, you know. And in that sense, YouTube is a good thing because it means there's no one paying for it or anything like that. You have to make sure they haven't monetized their video when you when you watch the video. Uh, so yeah, this is the end of that tricky period where they technically broke up before the tour, but carried on anyway, thankfully. So maybe it would get easier after this. Yeah, so nice sound once again, obviously, because it's recorded for TV. Uh, so we start with Waiting Man once again. I think Adrian is perhaps more composed than on the cap Agd. Agd. But overall more subdued than the other versions. I think they're tired actually. I mean, this is the end of the tour, and they're, they're, obviously it's still a fantastic show. But the the energy that was at the start, absolutely on fire at the start of the tour, isn't there? And maybe it was a grueling tour. Track two is the Lohan Jinjit. Same, um, some great feedback stuff going on from Adrian. He does a great, some great stuff on there. Uh, track three is Frame by Frame. It's a good version of Frame by Frame. Four minutes ten. I actually wrote down the time. A bit cruel. Adrian voice actually breaks. I mean, he does that very, very difficult high bit. You wouldn't hear John Wetton doing that high bit. His voice actually breaks. So it shows that they're, they're knackered. It's been a, you know, they're, they're, they've been working hard here. It's the only time I've heard his voice fail. Um, I don't know, maybe there was something in 2000. I know he had laryngitis in 2000, I think. Or a sore throat. A sore throat of some kind. So that shows, you know, that it was it was tricky. Uh, track four is Matakuda Sai. Uh, really distorted intro. And he's obviously got everything, some gain turned up there, which he doesn't normally do. I prefer it when the vocals are more subdued, and they are here. He's, I think he's having to take it easy on his voice a bit. Um, and in the 90s, I think it's great. He doesn't sing so long a notes, and uh, it's just a bit more reserved. I actually prefer it like that. Uh, track five is The Sheltering Sky. Mostly pretty workmanlike performance of a great track, but there is some really soaring stuff from Fripp. He's obviously, they're, they're giving it their all here. You can tell that. Uh, track six is Neil and Jack and Me. Still better than the album version. All great. Adrian Blue seems to have shifted up a gear and got his energy back or something, I think, because he's he's great on this. Track seven is Elephant Talk. I would love a stick. Um, they're very expensive, though, you know. I, I can't justify it, to be honest, but I, I would love to have a stick. They're lovely sounding instruments. Whether it's as easy as Tony Devin makes it sound is a good question. Uh, not the best version, but, you know, it's, it's, it's Elephant Talk. Track 8 is Indiscipline, very synthy at the start, uh, but always great. Track 9 is Heartbeat, again I don't get the thing about it, why is it so great live, I think you had to be there. And track 10, Lost Tongues in Aspect Part 2, we finished 82 with that twangy and tinny but intense fun. The sound is weird though, uh, Levin's really cutting through the high end frequencies with the dun 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 dun, so that's great, but yeah, there are better versions still to come. See you next week for something happening in 1993. Mm -hmm.